Have you ever wondered why, under certain conditions, airplanes leave trails in the sky, or morning dews form on surfaces of grass? This is all about psychrometry. No, this is not psychology, but psychrometry, which is the study of air-water mixture and humidity. To understand more about water vapor in air, engineers have developed a chart like this, called the psychometric chart, to help. Yeah, I know what you are thinking. You are probably going psychotic by just looking at the psychometric chart. But no worries. Today I will step you through the chart so you can become an expert on humidity as well. To first understand about water vapor in air, let's make a simple analogy. Think about one of your favorite drinks. Unless you are a health conscious person or a hardcore coffee drinker, you are probably thinking about something sweet. Yes, sugar can be dissolved in water, and the sweetness of the liquid depends on the amount of sugar inside water. This is analogous to water vapor in air. A certain amount of water vapor can be contained in air, and the amount of it is called absolute humidity. If you now keep on adding sugar into your drink, at some point you reach the solubility limit, when the sugar will no longer dissolve. In the case of humidity, it is possible to add more water vapor into air until a point called saturation, which is the maximum amount of water vapor that air can hold. Beyond this, the water will condense out as liquid. While you can typically choose the percentage of sugar in your favorite pearl tea, this percentage of water vapor over the maximum capacity is called the relative humidity. One thing to note is that solubility or saturation depends on temperature. We know from cooking that if we apply heat, more sugar can be dissolved in water. Similarly, when we increase air temperature, it can hold more water vapor. So, if we take the air temperature as the x-axis, and the absolute humidity as the y-axis, and plot the saturation line and relative humidity lines versus temperature, we form the main part of the psychrometric chart. We can use the psychrometric chart to determine useful information about the condition of air. For example, if we have air with a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 60%, the state of the air, point O, is given by the intersection between the two lines. The amount of water inside air can be read from the absolute humidity to the right of the chart, which is 12 grams of moisture in 1 kilogram of air. Now we are ready to understand the condition when morning dew is formed. Say we start from point O again. If we decrease the temperature while keeping the same amount of moisture in air, relative humidity increases as colder air cannot hold as much water. If the temperature drops too low, below the saturation line, water will condense out. This temperature is called the dew point, and this is exactly how morning dew is formed, as the air temperature at night dropped below the dew point of the air. This is also why nice cold beer usually has water condensation around it. Getting back to the question I posed at the end of my last video, what is the relative humidity of air coming out from an air conditioner? We can also answer this with the help of the psychrometric chart. The air conditioner has a cooling coil in it. When air passes through the cooling coil, it will be cooled down. Since the temperature of the cooling coil is typically a few degrees Celsius, which is lower than the dew point of air, water will be condensed out from the air and start dripping from the air conditioner. This process can be tracked in the psychrometric chart, where the temperature is decreased and the absolute humidity of the outlet air is also decreased. But what about the relative humidity? It is actually close to 100%, as shown here. There are actually three more sets of lines in the psychrometric chart, namely the specific volume lines, wet bulb lines, and also the enthalpy lines. Stay tuned for our next video when we will talk more about them. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.